What's up, team? This is Sean, and this is our first episode of Let's Grow Your Business. Because for a change, I think we need folks who can really take questions and answers and give you some real-world thoughts, a real-world perspective from someone who's been out there, has done it, and has the gray hair to prove it. So quickly, what we're going to do here is run the show on probably a weekly basis, maybe more depending on the audience and what you want to see or hear, uh, and even you know throw them up any time if it makes sense and the right question comes in. But the key background here is uh, I'm doing a lot of things for a long time, and what I've seen is the rise of the guru course, the $50,000 one-day session, the sit down with an expert for an hour type of thing. We want to try something different and just make it a little bit more feasible for everyone who's at different levels to ask questions. Whether you're working in 9 to 5 and wish you weren't and you want to start your own thing or you're working in 9 to 5 and wish you were a vice president, well, let's talk about that too. So by way of a brief background, uh, again, my name is Sean. I think a lot of you probably know me from my my main channel, Invest to Live Here, where we talk about sort of just general business. We talk about investments. We talk about a lot of different things, but this is a little bit more pointed. So the goal here is to allow you to ask questions in the chat, to hit me up on Twitter and ask questions, to potentially come on and be live and ask some questions. And what we want to do is just provide some real world value, not someone who's at the 50,000 foot level running gigantic companies and hasn't really been down at the ground level for a long time. So by way of background, you think, okay, what do you know about it? Well, I've worked at big companies like IBM and Salesforce, spent about nine years at IBM, about six years at Salesforce. Uh, I've been at startups that have raised hundreds of millions of dollars, things like Radius Intelligence, et cetera. I've also started and run my own companies. I've had some exits in the past. I'm currently the CEO of Job Jeeves, as well as a managing member um, of another real estate and tr investment company as well. Sorry, I was thinking about how I was going to phrase that there. So the reason I'm sharing all this is from small businesses that I own myself to larger businesses that I've worked in to businesses that have been exited and raised hundreds of millions of dollars. I've sort of seen it all, been there and worked at different levels. So both from an individual, individual contributor perspective on the sales side to being uh, a manager and a leader of teams as well at some of these bigger companies. So I want to start off there by saying that's the general plan here. Now, the beauty of this is it's given me a lot of expertise around a myriad of services, business development, marketing, sales, operations, accounting, finance, you name it, we've got a little bit. And where I don't, I have no ego and I'm happy to pull in people who are experts in those areas too. And I'm actually happy to do that. So what I want to do is not just start with an introduction video. I want to start with actually a really deep dive into a framework that I'm really interested in and has provided me a lot of uh, financial benefit over the years. So we had a question come in off of Twitter that essentially was asking, you know, how do you think about a sales cadence for someone who wants to start a business or grow their business start to generate more sales in a more automatic way or really find a way to automate that process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right in. I'm not a fan of wasting time, and that's the topic we'll cover today. I don't expect to normally do this deep of a dive unless you'd like me to, and then I'm happy to do so. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen in a moment here. We're going to jump right on in. Okay, so let me find my magic button here. So here's what we're looking to talk about today, a framework and strategy for sales cadences. Okay, and the idea here is that we want to build interest and close more deals within our business, our job, whatever it is that we're looking at. So I guess what I'll do before I jump into really how I think about this, a sales cadence is how you go out and think about reaching out to your contacts in a way where you touch them multiple times across different methods. But the framework of how you do it can really vary depending on who you talk to. So I want to be clear here. This is a generic approach to it that can be tailored to your specific needs. And your needs might be very different on the type of business you have or the type of job role you're in or the level of your career, right? So keep that in mind. The other thing I want to call it ahead of time is that people get a lot of emails and phone calls. So the more specific and the more pointed you can be, the better it's always going to be at the end of the day. I just want to set that as sort of a, a beginning here before you jump into the weeds. So first and foremost, right, creating an effective sales cadence is crucial for maintaining consistent outreach, nurturing leads, and ultimately converting them into customers. This is really important. So the following slides are going to be a framework and strategy that you're going to be able to use to develop that sales cadence to generate interest and drive sales. Now, the reason this is important is far, far, far too many when they think about generating sales, getting leads going, having marketing efforts, it's sort of this one and done approach. I made a phone call and no one answered. Well, I left a voicemail or maybe I sent an email and they never got back to me. Well, that has to be your expectation. You have to go into the role of growth in marketing and sales, understanding really clearly that it's going to take a lot of effort to convert these folks because it's a competitive environment. And the effort does not have to be expensive. A phone call and an email should cost you very little, if anything at all. So if you have folks that might be interested or are a good fit for you, 
you should be putting in the effort. And I think a lot of times folks don't think about this or don't really know how to do it. So the first section we want to jump into here is this idea of a sales cadence framework. And I want to make this really easy to understand. So first and foremost, let's define your target, target audience. So what is your ideal customer profile, your ICP? And how do we identify this, right? So we want to understand who your target customers are based on things like the demographics, the industry, the pain points, and buying behavior. So is your product something that costs a whole lot and takes a long time to sell with a lot of expertise behind it? Or are you selling a product that they buy off of an ad somewhere that's maybe low price and they buy multiple times? Is it a SaaS product or a one-time sale? Is it an info product or a hard piece of machinery that has to be delivered? The more you know about your end client and the product that you're trying to put into their hands, the better it's going to be, right? Are they big companies or small co companies? Are they companies or are they people? This is what we mean when we think about an ideal customer profile, okay? Once you sort of start to understand what that ICP looks like, it's even more so important to understand how you create segmentation within your audience, right? So we've got our ICP. Now we want to break that down into smaller, more targeted segments for personalized outreach. Let me give you an example. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I worked at IBM for quite some time. Well, there's 400,000 employees there. So simply saying that IBM is the right customer for you is a great start, but who within IBM? Okay, well, I want to focus on Sales teams. Okay, sales teams of what kind of products? All right, well, sales teams of products that are tied to large contracts over a million dollars. Okay, great. What kind of titles are we looking to go after? Okay, I think vice president or higher. Great. Where will they be based? US, EMEA, APAC. We need to know these things. That's how we start to think about it. And even better, if we can get deeper into that profile, how long have they been in the role? What's their background and experience level? How do we start to build that contact around that segmentation? This is why it's important not just take everything at surface level. I know lots of people who say things like, I'm an unbelievably talented salesperson. I'm really good at sales. But they're selling widgets one-off to people they know or people in their specific area. And sometimes that doesn't extrapolate into being great at doing large and complex contracts, over-the-phone sales, in-person sales, webinar sales, right? So the key is really don't have an ego, do the work and do the research. The other big part of this as well that I think is important is how we think about setting clear objectives, right? Number one, goal setting. You have to determine ahead of time what you want to achieve with the sales cadence because not everything has to be signing on the line that is dotted, right? It could be my motion is to book more meetings. It's to nurture leads. It's to close actual deals. It's what you need in your business. Maybe the sales part's the easy part, but you can't get people to actually become a customer because you never get that initial first call. That's great. That's the sales cadence. The other big piece of this as well is KPIs. How do we, in our roles, in our businesses, in our jobs, in our lives, think about how we establish key performance indicators like open rates, response rates, call connection rates, and conversion rates? Now, there's many, many analytics tools that exist, and there's lots of SaaS programs that can do this. And depending on the size of your business and where you are in, in your business, it might be feasible to go out and purchase a solution. Or for many folks who are probably watching this, it might just be easier to record this in Excel and then build your own charts and graphs over that data. And that's something we can cover on another call as well if you're interested. But the goal though, is make sure you're keeping track of what you're doing, what the results are, and keep that information somewhere where we can use it as data down the road or really right away. But we have to have some degree of, of uh, a data flow to get a reasonable result from a KPI. So this is sort of still the beginning stage. Now we wanna to start to think about how we map out the cadence steps. Now in today's modern world, I want to preface this by saying customers and clients expect you to find them in the place where they are working. Depending on the generation or the type of business or the location, it might be a phone call, an email. Other folks might expect a LinkedIn message. Some folks might be looking to have social media interactions. So it's important to understand, again, going about that segmented ICP, who those folks are going to be and what the best way to get in touch with them is. This is also why tracking all this is so important. You might think phone calls are the best way to do business, but it turns out 80% of your folks would rather get a Twitter message or an Instagram DM. So when I say a multi-channel approach, we literally mean it. Utilize a mix of communication channels that might include emails, phone calls, social media, direct mail even, okay? Don't be shy about trying different things. Now, touch points, this is a big one. This is where most folks who are either not trained at a corporate level of selling or generally have never really tried to sell for their own business can oftentimes get discouraged. You need to go into this and understand it takes a lot over quite a bit your quite a period of time to really get in and behind the door of the folks you're trying to get in touch with. 
So when we think about touch points, I think a safe framework here is that you need to decide on the number of touch points. I think eight to 12 over a certain amount of time is not unreasonable as long as they are not the same types of things over and over again. Uh, bonus point, if you run a cadence during your job search, you will get phenomenal results compared to a lot of other folks out there who simply hit send resume, send resume, send resume, or set, or apply, apply, apply on LinkedIn. You know, you can leverage the same kind of a cadence in the same way that you go out and look for a job. So just keep that in mind or raise capital or anything you need to do within your business. Now, the timing, and we're going to get into this, is how we think about the way we schedule each step at optimal times for engagement. We have to consider factors like time zones and industry work hours. Now, this is really important, too, because... If we're sending all of our stuff during lunch on the East Coast, it's possible you may not even look at that when they get back because it gets buried in a number of emails. If we're shipping stuff overseas, are we only sending out social media during the daytime when they're asleep? Well, you know, really be cognizant and thoughtful about these things. If you're hearing this and you think it's too much work, hey, good for you, okay? But what I'm telling you is sales cadences are how companies become billion-dollar enterprises and doing them the right way even more so. Now, when we get into content and messaging, this is the really the meat and potatoes of what we're talking about. It's not enough to send an email anymore or a phone call and say, hey, I've got a great deal. Give me a call back. We need to know our segmented ICPs. We need to know what they care about, what matters to them, and research that. And I've got news for you. It's easier than ever, okay? So when we think about personalization, right, what this means is how do we tailor our messages to each segment and individual prospect, right? We want to reference their pain points, their industry or recent activities we've noticed within their company, within their own role or within those sectors. So I'll give you some easy ones here, right? LinkedIn has lots of information about the people you're going for. ChatGPT can be used as a generic research tool to understand things like what's happening within this industry, what's changing in this sector, what's creating pain points for CIOs who are in manufacturing companies of up to 500 employees, right? You need to come at that and have a concise cohesive message for why your solution can really help solve their problems in a way that doesn't come across as being pushy or salesy, but really value add, right? Why should you read my email or answer my call? Well, here's why. I know your business. I know your role. I know it keeps you up at night. Next up is the value proposition. So you need to clearly communicate how your product or service addresses their specific needs and adds value. Now, I sort of got into this a moment ago, but I want to call this out again. It's really being clear on you are providing a value, not just another expense on the books, okay? Especially in today's environment where people are feeling the effects of inflation, showing why you are offering value is a huge win. If you can show someone that your product costs $100,000, but folks who use your product typically see a return of a million dollars, right? That's huge. And this is how it's done in big companies. We present business value cases. We show customers the value of what they're buying and the typical returns we expect. Then finally, we have a call to action or a CTA. A CTA is extremely important across all aspects of what we're talking about here. You want to include a clear, concise CTA in every touch point, whether it's scheduling a call, downloading a resource like a white paper, or signing up for a webinar where you try to get them to answer questions live or get them interested in your product. You want to make sure it's very clear what the purpose of your message is. Your purpose isn't to sell them a widget. Your purpose is to get them on the phone or have another conversation or schedule time with them to speak. That's the important thing, okay? Too many folks think, I pick up the phone, I try to sell something, I don't know what happened. Sure, for some folks, maybe that's the way to go. I don't really think that's the idea behind what most people are trying to do in their businesses when they think about growth. Now, all that being said, it's meaningless without an execution strategy. So the goal needs to be how do we scale this in a way where it's doable across my entire business, no matter how many folks I have working for me or how big my team or budget might be. So you can scale this as needed from execution perspective, but these are key takeaways I want to call out uh, as part of this. Where can we possibly automate the process, right? So if you're using a CRM tool and sales engagement tools to automate and track your cadence, right, that's phenomenal. So we can get in consistent follow-up via automation within software platforms and programs. So you might think things like, I mentioned I work at Salesforce. Salesforce is a massive CRM company. You also have companies like SalesLoft that automate cadences. But you can also do this in Excel. You can set it up as a reminder. You can use even coding like Python to help you remember and send these things. So there's lots of ways to do it. It doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Your budget should drive your execution a little bit, but the execution still has to happen. 
Now on manual personalization, I want to call this out, right? For high value prospects, you really, really, really want to personalize that outreach to increase the engagement. If your goal is just to reach every homeowner in the U.S., you know, personalization is not a big deal. You can simply have it keyed in as, hey, congrats on your new home, or I've seen you're a homeowner in the U.S., right? Whatever. If you're trying to target Sean, the CEO of JobDees, and you send me information about a random topic that doesn't relate to my role or the pains that I have, I'm really not likely to engage or probably even open that or respond to you. Or I think, hey, you don't even know who you're talking to, so you're wasting my time. Now, the cool thing here is it's not hard to get good at this. If you start out and you're very rocky, it's okay. That's why we're saving the data and we're looking at those KPIs and analyzing them, right? So next up is we want to understand testing and optimization. So we want to A-B test different messages, subject lines, and touch points to see what works best. Now, the beauty here is we can get lots of cool content ideas off of tools like ChatGPT. I am not sponsored by ChatGPT, but I do like to use it quite a bit. So when we think about A-B testing, what we mean is I might have two groups of folks I want to send emails to, right? Both are vice presidents of sales, perhaps at software companies. And I want to send a subsect of that group message A and another subset message B and see which of those messages results in callbacks, email returns, social media responses, right? We want to be able to look at those and compare and understand why it's working, what's working better about it, and always make sure we're pivoting towards what gets best responses, positive responses, of course. And there are tools that can help you do this for sure, depending on your budget. Or again, I'm going to fall back to this every time. You do not need capital to do anything that I'm showing you. You can just start doing it, recording it in, an, in a Google Sheet, and going over those results over time, right? Manual is not easy, but manual is important because you need to have these data points as much as you can, okay? So again, there are really inexpensive options. There are free options, and there's also very expensive enterprise options. So after all of that, what do we want to do? Well, you've heard me say it a few times, and it really culminates here. Review and iterate. This is so important. And people, team, I'm telling you if you're watching this, people do not review what they've done and iterate based on results, okay? Analyze the results. Regularly review your KPIs to assess the effectiveness of your sales cadence. This is so important. Have a set time. Maybe it's once a month. Maybe it's once a week. Maybe it's once a quarter. It doesn't matter. It's what works for your business. But make sure you understand how effective you're being. There's, there's this motion that says it doesn't matter as long as I send enough. Sure, if you send a million emails, the odds are someone's going to open them up. But the reality is, why would you want 1% to open your emails if it could be 2% or 3% or be more targeted towards 1,000 high-value people and get better results from that high-value list, right? So always be analyzing. And the other piece, of course, and I hope this is obvious, but I want to put it here anyways, adjust accordingly. OK, refine your strategy based on what's working and what's not right. This could be frequency, content or channels. If you're pounding social media and getting no results, it's very possible the folks you're targeting might be too busy to be on social media because they have real pain points. It might be possible it's on a place where they are looking to get work advice or sales pitches. Right. I get a ton of sales pitches on Twitter that don't know my name, don't know the business I'm in, very generic and random stuff. I literally don't read any of them. But if someone sent me a DM and said, Sean, one of the biggest problems for CEOs is consistently raising capital over long periods of time. We have a solution that fits exactly that. And it looks like you're in the right place for that. I might be interested in opening that email. Okay. So section two, and this is because all of that stuff beforehand is only so good if you actually know what to do next. So let's talk about a sample sales cadence strategy. Uh, this can be absolutely iterated to however you think it makes sense on your end, but it's also a good starting point if it's the first time doing this. And it doesn't have to be perfect, okay? It does not need to be perfect. It just needs to be something you're being thoughtful about, collecting data, and analyzing the results from it. So let's call it day one is initial outreach. And the reason we think about days is we want to make sure we spread out sort of how often we're reaching out to folks um, about what we're trying to get, whether it's that meeting, that sale, that webinar, that white paper download, whatever. So email one might be an introduction email with a personalized note about the prospect's pain point and a brief overview of how you can help, right? Include a CTA to try to book that next meeting or get that next step. So a great way to do this is via LinkedIn connection, right? Send a connection request with a personalized message related to your email. I do this all the time. It's something I like to think about. How do I double and triple stack my efforts? Um, if I send you an email at, you know, sean at whatever.com, 
uh, send me a LinkedIn as well and say, hey, I just sent you uh, a quick note about something I thought you'd be really interested in. Uh, I wanted to be connected as well because I think I can add a lot of value to what you're doing, right? Something simple like that where, you know, I might say, oh, I wonder what value you could add, right? But the email should be clear with that CTA. Day three, we're going to follow up, okay? So this is phone call number one. I'm going to call the prospect. I'm going to reference the email and LinkedIn message. And if they don't answer, I'm going to leave a voicemail with a quick value statement calling that out as well. Hey, Sean, I sent you a quick email and a LinkedIn request. Here's why. I'd love to get you on the phone and have a quick conversation, right? And again, I'm going to send one more LinkedIn message here, just a follow-up message on LinkedIn if we connected. If we haven't connected, I'm not going to keep pounding them on LinkedIn. We don't want to overdo that and have it look bad, right? So if they connected, we'll send another follow-up. If they haven't, that's okay. Stick with the phone call and voicemail if needed. So day five, we need to add some more value. We've gotten no contact at this point. They haven't responded to email, call, or LinkedIn. It's time to share value. This is a huge, huge piece of the pie, right? So this is email number two. Share a relevant case study, white paper, industry report that addresses a challenge the prospect might be facing. And then again, tie it back to your CTA, right? This is important to you. This is how I solve this problem. Now, if you're thinking like, well, I don't have a case study or I don't have a white paper, team, ChatGPT can help again, right? I'm not saying to take it verbatim or that it's the word of God or something. What I'm saying is from a standpoint of ideas or ideation, it's a good starting point, right? If you can even share a couple lines that, hey, this industry is growing at 4% CAGR per year, your specific sector is seeing out, outlandish growth within that, you know, here's how we can help. But the problem is finding this is going to solve that, right? Just try to tie it back to a cohesive reason that it matters. But the more you can make it about real numbers, something real, the more likely they are to think it, it's going to add value to them, right? I don't want to hear that you can solve my problem when we haven't talked yet. I haven't confirmed that there's a problem. What I might say, though, is, hey, the top three things keeping CEOs awake at night is X, Y, Z. We actually are really hyper-focused on solving for Z. We can take that completely off your plate and solve it. When can we talk about this, right? Those are the kind of things I want to see here. Day seven, this is social proof, okay? This is going to be phone call number two, right? We're going to call again. If no answer, we're going to send an email summarizing successful outcomes for similar companies in their industry. Now, I want to pause for a second. Some of you guys in the startup space who are brand new, you may think to yourself, well, we don't really have this yet. Okay, this is going to sort of bleed into another conversation we'll have another time on this channel. But if you don't have any idea what your product or solution can actually do for the customers you're targeting, you have a bigger problem on hand here. You haven't run an MVP. You haven't actually gone out and tried to get customers yet. So it's going to be tough to do this. So it's a strong, I would say, extremely strong suggestion that you need to have some customers, even if it's just some free work or free consulting or give them a view and usage of your products and get some feedback on it, okay? If it's consumer-based, this is going to be a little bit easier. If it's business-based, find some local businesses that don't mind doing you a favor. Look within your own social group, family and friends online, and offer you know a week for free, a month for free, whatever it might be, but get some feedback that you can share because that's what I want to hear as a leader. I'm going to take a pause here for a second because I think it's really important. The odds that I'm going to not only take your call, listen to your CTA, and find out that I'm your first paying customer is not a good thing for me. That's a lot of risk with no proof whatsoever. So the more you can prove it out with actual results, the better and more compelling it's going to be, okay? If you're shaking your head, you can't do this, it doesn't make sense, you got bigger problems than setting up a cadence, okay? So day 10, we're going to handle some objections. So email number three is going out. We're going to address some common objections or concerns, providing evidence or testimonials to alleviate any doubts, right? Include a new CTA that offers a different form of engagement, such as a free trial or demo. So again, I'm going to pause and say this. The goal is not to harass, right? We're just going to send a couple of emails, maybe a couple of phone calls, a LinkedIn message with different things every time. It's not just the same, hey, why haven't you called me? Hey, I tried calling you. Hey, can you call me, please? want to call this out, right? What are some of the common objections you hear from other customers? Hey, I understand that you're extremely busy. I understand, you know, from the previous report I sent you, CEOs are up at night dealing with these things. Again, here's how we can help. I know you're busy and a phone call may not make sense. Uh, maybe we can chat in a different way, or maybe we can do a, live, a webinar over lunch, or maybe I can buy you a coffee and we'll chat on the phone then, right? Tie it back to something that's a little bit different that might get them thinking, okay? 
And different forms of engagement, such as free trials or demos, they work great. Other things you can do, if it's a really important customer that you're really trying to get in front of, send them a $5 gift card for a coffee shop and say, hey, can I buy you a virtual cup of coffee while we have a quick phone call about this? If nothing else, maybe they'll just take the $5 and listen to you, and then it's on you to actually progress the next steps, and maybe it gets them to answer the phone. And if you have a free trial or demo, I mean, that's phenomenal, but not all businesses are going to have that, so just keep that in mind. Now, again, there is an end to the madness, right? If they absolutely are completely ignoring you, there's no responses back, it is okay to put an end to it. So what does a final attempt look like? We're going to make our third our third phone call, right? This is our final attempt to close the loop on this. If we don't get a response, just mention the voicemail. This will be the last outreach. And you're absolutely welcome to reach out at any time when it makes more sense for you. Here's my phone number. Here's my email. Thanks so much for listening. And I'm going to send an email at the same time. And this is one that's a little controversial, but I put it in here because I wanted to make sure we light some fires for folks who are new to sales cadences. You're going to basically break up with them. Okay. And I don't mean this in a rude and never harassing way, but a polite breakup email, thanking them for the time and leaving the door open for future contact. So it's something like, you know, Hey, Sean, I know we haven't been able to get in touch. I feel very confident that we have the right product to fit your industry and your specific needs in your role. I'd love to confirm if these are things that are important to you or that you're working on, but I understand you're probably very busy and now isn't the right time. Uh, you know, Reach out to me in the future. Let's talk again. I'll reach out in six months. However you want to finish that, go for it. But the key here is you do want to put a stop to it at some point, right? And if you think about it, how many of your voicemails do you listen to? How many of your emails do you really open up and read? So if you're watching this and you're saying to yourself, oh my gosh, three phone calls, four emails. I mean, this feels crazy. Listen, team, I got to tell you something. BDR teams, SDR teams, inside sales teams are sending thousands and thousands and thousands of emails out, phone calls every day, hundreds per day, per person sometimes. They are not worried about whether or not you're answering the phone. They're just worried about how they're going to get you on the phone or get that meeting or get that download. You have to really turn it on to understand that when you are in an ultra competitive environment, whether it's a startup, you're trying to grow your business, you're trying to do a turnaround, whatever it is, you're competing with gigantic teams of folks who are not scared to make three phone calls and they are certainly not scared to send four emails, okay? It's on you to decide what level you want to go to, but I've got news for you. Uh, I've managed teams of hundreds of sellers and they are very hungry and very aggressive and trying to get someone on the phone to do business with. So with all that being said, here's a couple of quick tips at the end, right? Consistency. Ensure that each step is followed consistently across your sales team. Now here's why. And you might be your sales team, by the way, that's okay. But here's why it matters. In order for us to look back and understand the results of the data that we gather through this process, we can't have some cadences that skip phone calls or skip emails. Whatever you decide on is your framework, is the framework you need to stick with until you decide to scrap it and move to something different, right? If it's not working. But you have to do it consistently, consistent messaging, consistent voicemails, consistent emails, so you can track what is working and what is not working. Changing it halfway through does not lead to better results, right? Because you won't know what happened. What if you changed something but didn't realize that's just when the person answered the phone finally? It has nothing to do with the way you reached out, just pure luck, right? You called earlier, you called later. So those are all things to be thinking about too. Adaptability is a big one, right? You do have to be prepared to adjust your cadence for different prospects based on responses engagement level. The higher up you go in the org, the harder it is going to be to get engagement. The bigger the type of company, the harder it's going to be to get engagement. Really big companies might have a chief of staff, an assistant, a secretary who's going to answer that phone and shut you down. A lot of CEOs don't even get their emails. They go through someone else first to, to make sure that there's actually a reason for that call. So sometimes what I'll do, and this is just a little tip that's not included here, I like to do what I call the sandwich method, where I want to go as high up as I can in the organization and as low as I can in the organization and try to meet in the middle the people who are really living and dying by the solution that I'm going to provide to them, right? We all like to think it's the C-suite, the senior executives who want our product, but ultimately that's not what they want. They want to increase revenue, increase EBITDA, right? Increase the bottom line, decrease expenses. They're thinking macro. And the baseline, a lot of times it's very micro that that person who's making 200 calls a day just wants more people to answer the phone. But ultimately the person who's responsible for that might be their manager or second line manager, so as part of that segmentation within the org for that personalization, who feels the most pain? 
how do we deliver it to them in a way that makes sense to them, right? I want those folks at the bottom level when I'm calling in to tell me, yeah, I just wish I could make, you know, 50 less calls per day if I had a better solution. And you say, oh, great, let me report that up the ladder and say, hey, I've talked to some of the folks on your team. They love what they do, but they just think there could be a better way to do it. We actually have a great way to do it that's slightly different. Even when thinking about cadences and recording, this might be an opportunity to sell them analytics or to sell them an, uh, a cadence automation tool. See how this works? Then when we go to that C-suite and we say, look, we've met with a number of people in your org. And what we've heard is they could be doing more at a higher output, which means more to the top line, more EBITDA, more ways to think about cost savings by bringing in automation, right? When we start to stack those conversations by sandwiching the information, things work great. But only if you know who you're targeting, what their persona is, what their pain is, right? So this stuff works in the real world. You just got to get out there and do it. And I know you can read it and it's on the screen, but I'm going to say it anyways, right? Metrics monitoring matters, okay? You have to monitor and analyze the performance of the cadence. You have to make data-driven adjustments as needed. Gut feels are fine, but in the real world, and especially if you're trying to build something that you can sell or get investment for, everyone wants to see data. Employees want to see data. VC wants to see data. Private equity wants to see data. Your board wants to see data. Your leaders want to see data, right? It's very important. Even if you're a one-person business, being able to look back and see things that have worked and haven't worked adds huge value add to everything that you're doing. So as a final point here, what I really want to call out that you know, leveraging this framework and strategy can absolutely help you develop a more structured sales cadence that systematically nurtures leads, builds relationships, and drives sales more effectively within your org and your outreach efforts. My goal here is to make sure that you understand that there are ways to do things that are better than just doing them, right? Making a phone call is great. Making a phone call with purpose is better. Making a phone call with a CTA in a structured framework is great, okay? So I'm going to leave it there. But as I was closing up, I wanted to add one more slide because I was thinking if I was watching this, what would be some of the questions I have? And I want to make this really simple. Do you have more questions? Do you have specific questions? Do you need more help? Do you need more help in your business? Are you looking to get someone to help you with that growth? Drop a comment below. Hit me up with what you need. We can figure something out. Um, although it's not something I was really considering, for sure, if you need some additional help, let's talk and see what we can do to work that out. And team, until then, thank you for watching the first episode. Please let me know if this is valuable. I know it's a lot, but growing a big business is not a joke, and it takes a lot. So with that, great to see you. Thanks for joining. There'll be more soon. Have a good one, team. And final one. If you did watch till the end, this is always a little bonus I do, just write the word framework in the comments and any other thing you want to say as well, but write framework so I know if you got to the end. Thanks, team.